Okay, this is the final video in the playlist where we've been looking at the uh, specimen paper set one and its Edexcel higher tier. Um, in this particular video, we're actually going to, only going to be looking at three questions. So please do have a look at um, the paper by downloading from the link below in the description box and have a go at these three questions. Okay, so we're going to start with question number 21 after we finish the previous video video at question number 20. Okay, this is um, one of these types of questions which um, you've really got to uh, work through fairly carefully, but it says there's 10 pens in the box, there's Ed Red X red pens in the box, and the other pens are blue. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So that particular scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a little kind of um, probability tree. So I've got red and blue pens in the box. Okay, so if there's 10 altogether, it means, and there's X red pens, it means there's X out of 10 red pens, okay, and the blue pens, there's going to be, well, 10 minus whatever the X pens are out of 10. So this X is whatever these red pens are at the top. Okay, hope that's all right. So along comes Jack and he takes a random two pens for the box, from the box. And you've got to find an expression for the probability that Jack takes one pen of each colour. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete this whole probability tree. Um, so I've got then this is my first pick. OK, and then I've got my second pick. Now, if you're not following any of this, I do suggest you stop the video and have a look at some of the other questions on probability trees um, within the channel, because that will give you at least an orientation before you start going through this. I really don't want to confuse you, but it will take a little bit of time to kind of work through. OK, so we've got a first pick. And we've got a second pick, and that's red, and that's blue, and that's red, and that's blue. Okay, so the easy part of it first is that there were 10 pens in the box. There's actually now going to be nine pens in the box. Okay, so I can fill out that bit of information. Okay, now let's have a look at if he picked a red pen the first time round. Well, there were X red pens, so there might be five or four or whatever it might be. But however, now there's one left. So that would be X minus one. Okay. However, if he picked a red pen the first time round, the number of blue pens has remained the same. So this would be 10 minus X. Okay. I hope you can read this. Okay. Um, on the website, you'll be able to download this as a PDF of all of my working. So it'll show you on there if you can't quite read it on the screen. Okay, so let's have a look at um, this probability where he picked a blue the first time round. Well, if he picked a blue the first time round, um, it now means there's actually nine pens in the box of which some of them are red. Okay, so it'd be nine minus X, but the red pens remain unchanged. So that's going to be X on its own. OK, so let's have a look then at outcomes. We've got um, the probability that it's one pen of each colour. So what I'm interested in is red, blue and blue, red. OK, well, the outcome for red, blue is going to be X over 10 times 10 minus X over 9. OK, and if I work that through, I've got 90 at the bottom, so that's fairly straightforward. And then I'm going to have x times 10 is going to be 10x. And then x times minus x is going to be minus x squared. And that's divided by 90. OK, so hopefully you can see that all right. Let's have a look at then the probability for blue red. Well, that's going to be 10 minus x over, in this case, 10. And that's going to be multiplied by x over 9. OK, well, again, same situation I've got, although I've not put this in the right way around and I've not used brackets, but it's x times x, uh, sorry, x times 10, which is going to be equal to 10x. 
and then x times x, which is going to be minus x squared, and again divided by 90. Okay, all right, hope that's all right for you. So let's then have a look at the totals. And this is where you need to just be able to kind of work through these, um, adding these two expressions together. But the good thing is they've both got the same common denominator. So we can go right ahead and we can write it as a total, which is over 90. And it's going to be the first um, numerator which is 10x minus x squared which is this first bit here and then I'm going to add that to 10x minus x squared okay so it still looks not very good um, and actually the final answer is not great either but if you follow these steps you should be okay we've got 10x plus 10x is going to be 20x and then I've got minus x squared minus x squared. Well, that's going to be minus 2x squared divided by 90. And actually, that's the answer to the question. You could fiddle around with it a little bit. Um, what I suggest you do is you could divide through by, uh, well, we can actually factorise this bit at the top if you like. So what we'll do is we'll factorise this bit to make it... Um, 2x times 10 minus x, and that's all over 90. Okay, so that 2x or the 2 and the 90, I can then reduce if I want to. So I could make that something like um, x times 10 minus x over 45. And that's absolutely fine for this question. If you want to then expand it out a little bit, you could make it um, 10 x minus x squared all divided by 45. Doesn't really matter if you leave it in its uh, in its factorised form, that's perfectly fine. Okay, hope that's all right for you. It has taken a little bit of time to work through. Um, that's why really there's only gonna be three questions on this particular video, and we're gonna crack on really with the next one, which is to do with vectors. Okay, now vectors, uh, becoming very popular and uh, do take a bit of time to work through but hopefully we'll be okay with this particular one and they're asking us to prove that the vector cx equals two-fifths of the vector cy well we need to work out vector cx and vector cy first okay so let's have a look firstly at cx what we're talking about is that x is a point on a b so that ax to x b equals one to two so what that means is if we put that point x here then this is one third of the way and this is two thirds of the way okay it's one to two Okay, so we're looking at firstly working out the vector cx. So I'm going to put this here, I've got vector cx. Okay, so that's this vector along here. Okay, so if I want to work that out, um, I don't know anything about it, but I do know I can go along there and then up here. Okay, so what I'm going to say is I can go vector CA, which is easy enough because we're told that that's 3A. And then I've got to do a third, oh sorry, big pun, plus a third of vector AB. OK, well, the difficulty with this one is we have to work out the vector a, b first. OK, that's the first thing that we've got to work out. OK, so let's have a look at this then. So I'm going to say if I look at a to b, well, I can go a to c and c to b. OK, so uh, if I just write this up here, I've got vector a, b, and that's going to be vector a to c plus vector b to c. OK, so if that is the case, then I can say that vector AC, remember, we've got to go against this. So it's going to be minus 3A and then C to B is plus 6B. OK, now I can leave it at that if I want to, but I just don't really like this minus right at the very beginning. So I'm going to change that to 6B minus 3A. OK, so I can now go ahead and put that into this equation or into this uh, vector here. So I could write that now as vector CA. Well, that's easy. That's 3A plus a third of 6B minus 3A. OK, so I can work that out now. If I multiply out this bracket, I've got 3A 
hopefully you can see that okay plus a third of 6 well that's going to be 2b and then a third of 3a well that's going to be a okay so if I tidy that up a little bit I've now got my first value of vector cx which is going to be 2a plus 2b okay so that's the first bit of information that I need to answer this question okay let's have a look now at vector cy now I'm going to try and I might have to move this around a little bit but let's have a look at vector cy okay so what we're talking about is the vector that goes from c here all the way to y over there okay now that's made up of well, a couple of things what i think i can do is i can go c to a and then i can go um uh, c to b no i can't go c to a because i don't know anything about this one so i'm gonna have to go the other way i do apologize i have to go the other way so i'm not gonna say c to a i'm gonna go c to b Okay, I beg your pardon. Okay, so C to B. So I'm going to go all the way up there and then I'm going to come all the way down here. And that's going to be plus vector B to Y. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Well, C to B is going to be 6B because it tells me that. And then B to Y is going to be plus 5A minus B. Okay, now if I just tie that up a little bit, what I end up with is... 6b minus b, well that's going to be 5b, and plus 5a. Okay, so now we've got vector cy. So we've got those two vectors, and what we're going to say is that cx is equal to two-fifths of cy. So if we just kind of think about that for a moment, if I'm going to say that cx is equal to two-fifths of vector cy, well cx is... 2a plus 2b and that's equal to two fifths of cy which is 5b minus 5a okay so if i multiply this out what i end up with is going to be actually these fives cancel out so i end up with 2a plus 2b equals uh two uh what have i got there uh, 2a plus 2b okay what have I done there yeah 5a plus sorry about that okay this is 5a 5b plus 5a and 5b plus 5a okay so I can cancel those out and I've got the two equal to each other I hope that's okay vectors are quite challenging um, and they can take a little bit of time so again please do have a look at some of the uh, videos on the playlist within the channel and there are lots of examples of these sorts of vectors and working through them okay hope that's all right let's move on to the final question of this particular paper which is going to be question number 23. Now question number 23 we've got to find the equation of the line that passes through C and is perpendicular to AB. So there's AB and we've got to find mm, we think the equation of this line which is perpendicular to it. Okay so let's just have a look at that for a moment. Um, in order to find this we're going to first work out the equation of the line AB. So let's look at line a, B. Well if you remember that uh, it's better to kind of write out the general form Y equals MX plus C. Okay, because there's two elements to the uh, equation of the line. The first one is going to be the gradient, which is M, and the second one is going to be the y-intercept, which they call C. That's fairly straightforward because that's going to be 4, so I can do that straight away. Okay, that's going to be plus 4. Okay, the uh, value of M is actually the gradient, which is the difference in y divided by the difference in x. So I don't know if you can see this okay on the screen, but the difference in y is this, it's 0 to 4. Remember we're looking at this point here, so it's 0 to 4, so that's going to be 4. And the difference in x is going to be the difference between 2 and 0 here, so that's going to be 2, so that's going to be uh, a gradient of 2. So I could write this line as 2x 
plus 4y equals 2x plus 4. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now let's have a look then at, so we've got the gradients, we've got the uh, equation of this line AB. So if we want to find out line BC, we know it's perpendicular. Perpendicular to 2, the negative reciprocal. Okay, now uh, you need to be aware that the perpendicular gradient of any line is the negative reciprocal. So I make that minus 2 and reciprocal is I divide it or I flip it over the other way. So it's going to be minus a half. So what it means is if I look now at line BC, I've already actually got that Y equals minus a half X plus C. OK. So hopefully that's all right for you. You need to remember about this negative reciprocals. OK, so let's have a look now at just making sure that we've got this value of C. Now, the way to do that is we know that this line passes through the point 5 minus 1. So I can plug that directly into this equation. Minus 1 equals minus a half, I'll put it in brackets, times 5 plus C. OK. Now, if I want to keep this as decimals, which maybe is a little bit easier to calculate, I've got minus 1, and I've got minus a half times 5. Well, a half of 5 is 2.5, OK? So I'm going to write that as minus 2.5 plus C, OK? And then if I want to find out the value of C, what I do is I take that 2.5 over the other side and add it. So I've got minus 1 plus 2.5 means that C must equal plus one and a half. OK, so I can write this line now. I've got all my component parts. I've got the gradient. I've got the C intercept, which is one and a half. So I'm going to write this now as Y equals. And just to make it a bit tidier, rather than my writing minus a half, I'm going to keep it as a decimal. So it's going to be minus 0.5x plus 1.5 for the value of C. OK, I hope that's all right for you. If you want to keep that as a fraction, that's perfectly fine. No problems at all. It's just I think sometimes these sorts of questions, writing it as a decimal makes it a little bit easier for you. OK, so that's the end of this particular uh, series of videos in the playlist. We have been looking at uh, fairly high level um, Edexcel uh, sample materials. I hope you've uh, managed to uh, answer a good number of the questions. If you're not sure, please do add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Have a look at some of the videos on the channel and every success with your studies and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.